Pre-Calc chapter 3, section 2. So for this one, we're going to uh, recognize and evaluate logarithmic functions and graph uh, log functions. So talking about logs. So graphing this exponential function, something we did yesterday a little bit, so we're going to review it again today. The domain and range you could know right away when you look at it. Um, we could make a table to help us out, but if you're just doing that mentally, if you plug 0 in for x, we're at 1. That's that starting value again. It's that awesome A value. It's like 1 times 3 to x. So now it's my A value. Um, if I plug 1 in for x, I'm up at 3. If I plug 2, I'm going to be up at 9. Uh, if I plug negative 1, it's going to be, and so you can write the 3 to negative 1 is 1 third. And I know it's going to keep approaching the horizontal asymptote. And so then there's the graph of this exponential growth function. The domain here would be all real numbers. The range is all the y values from uh, not including 0 but greater than 0. So you could say like 0 to positive infinity. The y-intercepts is the point 0, 1. The asymptote is the equation y equals 0. A vertical line test, it passes. Yes, it, it passes the vertical line test. Horizontal line test, yes. And again, this is talking about the horizontal line test is that it's 1, 2, 1, by definition from previous chapter, which is different than the 1 to 1 solving, the 1 to 1 exponent rule. Um, we talked about our exponent property taught last yesterday. This, uh, this 1 to 1 is about if the uh, inverse is a function. And so log functions is stating that x is greater than 0, a is greater than 0, a is not equal to 1. That if you're written y equals log base a of x, if and only if x equals a to the 1. So log is a more of a notation where looking at these two equations where um, I think about more of the exponent form. So this right here I call exponent form this would be log form. So for, for example here that um, if we have 9 equals 3 squared, you know that's true. Now if we write that in log form, what we're doing is we're really switching, switching not the base, the base of this stays the base, it's log base 3, and then we flip the other two, so the 2 becomes on the other side of the equal, the 9 comes up here. So this says log base 3 of 9 is 2. It's, it's rearranging, it's switching the x and y's, which should, should sound really familiar. When we switch the x and y's, when we do that, that's called the inverse function. So the graph of the log base 3 of x, um, we could graph it using inverse points. And that's really what we're talking about here, is that the log is the inverse of the exponential function. So if we go back and, and look at this this graph here, let's take these points we plotted and let's plot the inverse points. So 0, 1 would become 1, 0. 1, 3 would become 3, 1. And then the negative, negative 1, 1 third would become 1 third, negative 1. And so you actually get this curve and you have a vertical asymptote on the uh, y-axis. So these are both, these graphs are reflections over the y equals x line because we switch the y and the x values because they're inverses. So that's the big thing to realize is that logarithmic functions are inverses, they're just inverse functions of exponential. And the whole point of inverse functions are to undo what's happening. So when we're talking about in logarithmic functions, they will help us undo our exponential functions. So log base 2 of 64, what does this mean? We should be able to mentally evaluate these. And to help me out, I may write that with an equal m, because this is log form. Let's first write this in exponential form. So in exponential form, it would be 2, same base. That base stays the base. And then we just switch the other two values. So it would be 2 to the m equals 64. And so thinking of it in this way, now I can say, oh, 2 to what power 64? And when we're looking at powers of 2, you're basically just doubling. So we 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 32, 64. So that's really 2 to the 7th power equals 64. So then this would be equivalent, or m would be equivalent to 7. 
So we can do the same thing with these other three. So this would be 9, if I let them all equal m, 9 to the m equals 3. Now how do I go from a big number to a smaller number with an exponent? So this is using our exponent rules. You need to recall that any value x to a fractional power really is the nth root of x to the nth power. So to make that smaller, I need a fractional exponent. So I know the square root of 9 is 3. So I know 9 to the 1 half power would also equal 3. So I know n is 1 half. Now this one doesn't show a base. When you don't show the base value, it's always base 10. Log base 10 of 10. And that's always true. That's the common log. So log base 10. So this would be 10 to the m power equals 10. So this here, m would have to equal 1. And then the same last one here, log base 7 of 1 equals m. So 7 to what power is 1? What exponent allows this value to equal 1? Well, again, another excellent rule. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So to be good at these, you have to be really good at your exponent rules. And this is the area I start seeing students struggle, um, not because of the new math, because they just don't know the exponent rules yet. So we have to make sure we're familiar with those. So common log has base 10. We already stated that. So log base 10 of a is log base a. You don't have to show that. So log with no base of 1 one hundredth is the same thing as putting a 10 in here, same m, and solving that. So 10 to what power? is going to be 1 over 100. So again, we have to use exponent rules here now to deal with it. So our exponent rules here is how can I, <clears throat> can you see how to make 10 to the nth equal 1 over 100? And if you don't right away, I would try changing some a little bit and base 10. So this is like 1 over 10 squared. So now I'm close, but this is in the denominator. So that's the same thing as 10 to the nth equals 10 to the negative 2. I bring that up to the top. So now I can see that our n value here has to be negative 2. And again, that's using our 1 to 1 exponent uh, property. Uh, if the base is the same, the exponents have to be the same. And so we don't use a calculator to evaluate that. We're just actually using our mental math and our exponent rules. The natural log is base e. So log base e of a is the same thing as ln a. So this is notation. If you realize when we use ln, it's really base log base e. So we calculate the natural log of 32 is really just like the log base e of 32. And you just can plug that in the calculator. There's actually that function right on the calculator, which is really just doing uh, natural log 32. And that's how you're going to plug that in the calculator. And the value of 5 would be 3.46. And you can roll through 3.46. So the calculator key you're going to use is the natural log key. So properties of logs or natural logs. So log base a of 1 is 0. And this is a property you got to know. And if you don't realize it in the log form, write it in the exponent form. So again, this is the exponent form here. This is the log form. And so if you kind of look at this as a chart where we have the uh, exponent log form. So a to the 0, you should know by now that's 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. If you put that in log form, it's log base a of 1 is 0. It doesn't matter what that base is. So natural log e is really the same as log base e of 1, which is still going to be 0. Another one is log base a of a equals 1. And you put that in exponent form, a to the first power equals a, which seems basic. But can you see that in log form? And the natural log of e is log base e of e. So if, I want, if you want to see that in this form, log base e of e has to equal 1. So log base a of a to the x is x, or the a of the log, a to the log base a of x is also x. These are inverse properties. Um, now they undo themselves. You have a log and you have the exponent here that undoes it, that undoes what's occurring. Here you have a power to a log, an exponent to a log. They're inverse operations, so you get that value x. So when you're looking there, you're looking for that this common base, how they both have the A and the A again. You have the A and the A, you have the A and the A, so then there will be inverses. So if log base A of X equals log base A of Y, then this is the X equals Y, one-to-one -one property of logs. If you can make them the same logs, 
same base, then the other portion has to be equivalent. It's like the exponent property, um, one to one property of exponents, um, but just using logs. So, some more examples log um, base root 8 of root 8 is 1. And we should realize that we put that in exponential form root 8 to the first power of b. So, natural log. Uh, again, using our exponent rules, this would be the same thing as natural log of e to the negative third. So I'm getting out of fraction form. Natural log is base e, so this is just going to be negative 3. This is log base e of e to negative 3, so these are inverses, the log and the exponent. Here, this is just going to be 22. Again, it's doing an exponent to a log, and those are inverses if you have the same base. Then e to the natural log 5 is going to be 5. They're inverses here. This is e to the log base e of 5. So you're doing a power to a log, which are inverses. So you just get the 5. So these are harder for students to see um, how simple they can be, but they're just inverses. They're basic properties like, like uh, e to the 0 is 1. Graph are a log function. So log base 4 of x minus 2. First thing you look at is any of the transformations. And because it says x minus 2 right here, I know that it's going to have a horizontal right 2. So I know my asymptote is usually at the y-axis. So if we shift the right 2, here's our new asymptote. So that's where you typically start. Now you can make a table for this, but uh, when I graph logs, I, I usually look at the two rules that are, are pretty simple rules. A to the 0 I know is 1. So in log form, that's going to be log base A of 1 equals 0. And the other one I want to look at is A to the first power is A. So in log form, log base A of A is 1. So what I try to do is I try changing our original equation into these two. Uh, properties. So if I have log base 4 and I want it to be 1, so the parenthesis here, what does x need to be to make that parenthesis 1? So it's going to be 3 minus 2. And remember that 3 value is actually our x value. So if we let x be 3, then 3 minus 2 is 1, and log base 4 of 1 I know it has to be 0, and that's just using this property here. So that would be the first point I can plot, where x is 3, the y has to be 0, so 3, 0. Another one I can use for this one is I'm making our log base 4 have a parenthesis here, a quantity of our same as our a value 4. And so we have to have 6 minus 2 to get the 4 value, and we have log base 4 of 4 is going to be 1. So if x is 6, then y has to be 1. So it's 6, 1 up here. And so I use these two points in my asymptote to help me sketch the graph here. So I'm going to approach this, and then I'm going to curve it around. And so when I graph logs, I, I usually don't choose values for x and plug it in. I use these two properties in the asymptote to help me graph it, and realizing that um, whatever I need to plug in for x to make these properties. So transformations, uh, if we can look at this our parent function, if we want to shift it 5 units left, what would it be? Log base 3 of 5 units left would be x plus 5. So then applying the transformation. Reflecting over the y axis, reflecting over the y axis is actually left to right, so it's horizontal reflection. So we log base 3 of a negative x. Again, this is applying to the x before we take the log. Shift 2 units down. So that would be log base 3 of x. 2 units down would be minus 2 outside the log. So you're taking the log and you have minus 2 outside. And vertically stretch by 7. Apply the function by 7 to vertically stretch it. So this is how you can apply some of these. Let me give you a homework problem. Let's have you graph log base 2 of x plus 1 minus 2. So I want you to try to graph, graph this. And this is going to be your homework problem. Um, so try sketching a graph of this and you can go back to using my example to help you out. Have a good night.